program that we're running for you. I was asked by Sheila Taylor of the Council on Aging if I uh, would like to do this for our seniors during this time of uh, social upheaval, et cetera. They're not getting out. We usually run a program every month for the Council on Aging at the Town Hall, and it's uh, a self-defense program. What I've been doing for the past uh, year is having a different topic each time, uh, because generally we would get the same people coming um, with some new people uh, working in. But what I'd like to do today is I'd like to put out uh, kind of a modified, simplified program so that everyone who's interested can follow along and perhaps gain some skills uh, in the area of self-defense. Okay, again, this is not comprehensive. Uh, if you're interested, and everyone should be, in learning how to defend yourself, you really need a more intensive program. But this is something for our people who have been doing it regularly to practice at home, and for other people perhaps to become interested and learn a little bit. Okay, so a little bit later I'll be asking Tashi Mark to come out and help me. I'm Tashi Deb, and we're from Mark Warner's Professional Martial Arts uh, here in Ipswich. And it's okay because of social distancing. He is in the same household. He rents an apartment from us, so my husband and I. So we have been hanging around together, so we're not breaking any uh, uh, rules here. Okay. So the first thing is we always talk about um, being confident. Um, this program is for people who, obviously, you try not to be in a place that you shouldn't be, uh, but you never know. You don't know. It could be even a family member who's, who's being aggressive towards you or a neighbor. Um, so this program is really uh, set for the confrontation. Now, we've tried to be proactive. Um, we've tried not to become a victim, um, but it, it can happen. So the first thing is, you want to be confident in any situation. So if you're being uh, approached or you're feeling uh, this, something's going on here, I don't like the way this person is, uh, is approaching me, I feel nervous, listen to those instincts because if the hair on the back of your neck goes up or you feel, it's probably telling you something. So be prepared, okay? So you wanna show confidence. You wanna show, you know, get those shoulders back as best you can, um, stand up and be ready for the confrontation. Okay, so the first thing that we, we teach people to do is to you know, walk confidently. So if you see someone's approaching you and you're, you're thinking, I'm not very comfortable in this situation and there's a way for you to, to leave, you, you put your shoulders back and you walk and just kind of say, okay, you know, no, no, no thank you. Okay. People ask me about eye contact. Eye contact is important. You don't want to look down and walk like this, okay? You wanna look up, someone's approaching you, you make brief eye contact. You don't try to stare them down, you just make brief eye contact. And this is because, this is a couple of things, okay? It shows them that you're aware that they are there, they are approaching you, you're not comfortable, you give them brief eye contact. They may reconsider, oh, okay. Also, if someone um, is if someone does something or has done something in the past, they know that the eyes are very recognizable. So if they are in a lineup, a police lineup, or something like that, and you go in and you say, that's the person, I recognize those eyes. So brief eye contact, you're walking shoulders back, brief eye contact, perhaps that's enough to kind of diffuse the situation the person leaves. Okay. Now, if they continue to approach you, let's say from the front, we'll do it from the front first, okay? You don't want to give full access to what we will discuss later, your midline. So as soon, if they're approaching you, or you're standing like this, and my people know we do this every class, okay? You stand back, stand back, put your hands up. Hey, hey, do I know you? Okay, now we don't want to step forward, okay? Because that might be perceived as being aggressive and you're putting yourself closer to what could be a dangerous situation. So you step back, it doesn't matter which side. Step back, put your hands up. Okay, this allows your midline to be a little bit protected, your hands are up so that when we start building our tools to use, you'll be able to use them. All right, so you practice that, step back. It looks easy. <laughs> After having taught this for over 20 years, I realized that it's not as easy as it looks. Okay, so now you have, you know, 
be confident, make brief eye contact, step back if someone is approaching you. Now we need some tools. Well, you're probably not going to be carrying a sword or something like that or something um, that you could use as a weapon. Okay, but you have your weapons here. Of course, your most important one is, is your brain, but you have weapons that you carry with you. Okay, the first weapon that I can think of is your hands. Okay, so these come in very handy. Uh, if you're making a fist, you take your fingers, go down once, go down again, and you want your thumb to be on the outside. So you practice doing that, making a fist. Okay, now people say, well, why, why make a fist? A fist is a rock. Okay, so you have a rock in your hand. A rock can be quite damaging, right? And you see in, you know, the movies or I don't know, people walking around and they're going like this. Okay, there's a reason for that. Because you want your arm to be straight. You don't want to pronate. If you pronate, it hurts. Okay, you can break your wrist. It's not effective, okay? So you practice by hitting something. Okay, and then you can walk around the house doing this. Okay, and just practice. These knuckles are the ones that strike right there. Okay, so you keep it straight. So you have your fist. So you're gonna, today you're going to practice your fist. Okay, you also have an open hand strike. Okay, and I call this my real estate strike because it's pretty big. You know, when you look at it, okay, it covers a lot of real estate. Okay, it's great if you can hit with the palm. You can, you know, practice doing that if you want. But you can picture going into someone's face with a hand like this, okay? Go, going right for the nose, breaking that nose. Don't worry, you probably won't kill them, um, but it will make the eyes water and, they can, and you can get away. Okay, so you have your fist, you have your palm. Those are two of the tools. We're kind of building a toolbox, okay? Now, one thing that I, I have om omitted here um, is the breathing. And I guess that's probably, as I tell my people that I work with, that's probably the most important thing. If you're not oxygenating, if you're not breathing, deep belly breathing, you're not getting all the oxygen and energy that you need for your brain and for your muscles. So these tools will be useless if you're high chest breathing. Okay. Now, if you follow um, Tashi Mark, he just uh, did a filming of his Tai Chi program. That's the most important thing that nice deep belly breathing, okay? So you have your toolbox, you have your, your deep belly breathing, you have your walking, you have you know, your shoulders back, you have your brief eye contact, you have your, your stance. Now you have your tools, two of your tools. You have your fist and you have your palm. Now you have other weapons too. You have knees, okay? Knees are pointy, knees can hurt. Knees can you know, go right into soft flesh, and be quite effective, okay? You have elbows, elbows are pointy, elbows can hurt, okay? Elbows can come this way, elbows can come that way, elbows can come down, elbows can come back, okay? So you wanna keep in mind you have elbows and knees also. You have your feet. Now, we're not, we don't need to do a fancy kick for self-defense, all right? If you kick someone's knee out, okay? Perhaps what we call with an arch kick or just a front kick, Okay, bend that knee and just push, snap it out. Okay, no fancy kicks, you don't need to do them. But these are something that, something that you can practice. Okay, if you need to hold on to something, hold on and practice your kicks. All right. You also have a stomp. You can stomp right on the top of someone's foot. It really hurts. Stomp on there. All right, so our tools, fist, open palm. Okay, you've got your elbows. You've got your knees, you've got your stomp. Now I mentioned the midline, and that's important, because when you, you're standing like this, so the person attacking doesn't have access to your midline. Okay, just like that, all right. You want to go for the person's midline, all right? So we're going to look at that midline. The midline starts here with the eyes, and a lot of people say, oh, I couldn't do that, I couldn't poke somebody in the eyes. Well, yeah, if they're choking you or, you know, going to hurt you or your loved ones, you can poke somebody in the eyes. It's nothing fancy. You don't have to do the nano nano. You don't have to do any fancy strike. Take your fingers and go like that right for the eyes. Now, you will practice this in a mirror because if you don't practice in the mirror, 
you need that reference point. You need to be able to look in the mirror and go right for your own eyes because when it comes time to defend yourself and you know you're terrified and even though you're remembering to do your nice deep belly breathing so you're keeping your head as clear as you can, you really need to um, know where you're going with it. And you, if you hit somebody in the shoulder with your fingertips, it's not going to do anything. Okay, so you have your eyes. Next thing down, your nose. Palm strike right to the nose, smash them in the nose. Yell out, no, stop, stop. Of course, you're always going to be yelling when you're defending yourself. I'll show you that with, our, with my, my bully pretty soon, okay? So eyes, nose. Now right underneath your nose is called the philtrum. And right here, it's very, very tender, okay? So you can take your fist. You can be fancy and you can do a leopard paw and go right for your philtrum. But you can take your fist and just bang right here. Okay, that's a knockout. That usually will knock somebody. You hit them hard right there, they're down, okay? Then when you come right here, right where your chin bone connects to your jaw bone, right there, I don't know, I guess that's your jaw. I don't know the technical term for this, but I call it the sweet spot or the glass jaw. Right here, if you take your finger and go like that, it's very tender. You can feel all those nerves in there, really. I mean, just pushing on it right now, this, this hurts, okay? You take that fist, boom, and you hit someone there, and that's another knockout place. So eyes, nose, philtrum, sweet spot, then come down right here, okay? Very hard to protect this part of your throat. You take your fingers and you sink it right in here, okay? And that's a, another spot on the midline. Traveling down here, you have a lot of people say, oh, that's the solar plexus, and yes, the solar plexus is right there. There's also the end of the sternum, the xiphoid process, and you take your fist, boom, and go right into that xiphoid process, okay? And it can snap off, and you can you know, do a lot of damage there, so that's also a place that you want to think about going to on the midline. Then, yes, you have the groin. If you put your knee up and go into the groin, male or female, that's going to hurt. Not a primary place. If you have ever watched any kind of um, martial arts sparring or fighting, you'll see somebody get hit in the groin, and generally they have protection on, but they get hit and they still have 15 or 20 seconds before they have to go down um, to the ground. So it's not a primary place, but you can certainly add it in. Okay, so all of these places you want to go in the mirror, eyes, nose, philtrum, sweet spot, throat, solar plexus, groin, okay, go right for those places, as you remember to protect your own, okay? Now, one of the easiest techniques, we call it the magic wave. Um, we teach three-year-olds this, anyone can learn it. In your situation as an adult, um, we're going to do something called one, two, three, and we're going to use this magic wave. Now, you wave to someone like this with your palm out, okay, it's not like this, not like this, okay, it's out. So the magic wave is just this movement right here, okay, which is good exercise too. So if you wanna walk around the house today doing this, it's great exercise. The one, two, three, we're gonna use our kick. Okay, so we're gonna either stomp on the top of the foot, we're gonna to kick to the shin, something like that when the person attacks us. Stomp or kick, then we're gonna do the magic wave, and we're gonna follow with that palm strike and stop, you know, and you can, you do want to yell, you want to, the yelling does a lot. Yelling alerts people to something's going on that shouldn't be going on. The yelling it makes you breathe and it could startle the person too, but of course you've smacked them in the nose so that's gonna startle them a little bit. So I'm gonna ask my bully to come out. I'll stand right here. Okay, and he's attacking me from the front. Okay, and all I'm gonna use is my one, two, three. So. He might have his hands on my throat. This is not good, you don't have a lot of time. One, two, three. Now when you practice this with a loved one, someone in your household at this um, time, um, you're not really kicking them or striking them, hopefully, okay? If they, so if it doesn't work as well as it would work on the street, okay, the reason is, and I ask people this, because I'll say, why do you think it's not working? And they go, I don't know. I said, because you're not really kicking them. You're not really using 
uh, that adrenaline rush and going in and nailing them. Okay, so that's why if it looks a little, if it doesn't work as well as you thought it should, that's why. Okay, so he just did a choke. Now, what if he grabs my hands, my wrists, and he's pulling me up? Same thing. Boom, wave. What the wave does peels those thumbs right off. Wherever those thumbs are on your body, the wave is going to peel them off and stop. Okay, so one more time for that one. One, watch slow motion. See how it's peeling those thumbs off? Two, three. Okay, you might grab my shirt. One, two, three. Okay, um, <laughs> anything else you grab from the front? Uh, <laughs> anything, okay? So anything from the front, one, two, three. Now if it's coupled with perhaps, <coughs> this is, at the, in self-defense you're probably gonna get grabbed. Um, someone isn't going to come up and start throwing punches at you, okay? So in self-defense situation, it's probably a grab. But he could, be, he could grab one side, okay? And then maybe go to swing and hit me on the other side, okay? So I, I do want to stop that. All right, but this works the same way. One, two, three. All right, but probably, most likely, you'll just be grabbed. Okay, now, from the rear, someone sneaks up behind you, Obviously, that's not going to work. So he grabs me from behind, okay? And there are several different things you can do. The one that's probably the most effective, okay, and you're going to use that mid, that midline targets is to do what I call the Shakira, or we call the Shakira, slip to the side. So you're just gonna slip your hips to the side. Doesn't matter which way, but you go one way. I'm gonna go to the right, so that frees up. His midline is to my left. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, it's right there. The midline is right there. So any grab from behind, somebody's coming behind, and he's choking me. Shift so that you have clear that space. Boom, boom, boom. Anything that you want right there. Okay, from behind. Okay, so remember, this is not comprehensive, but this will get you started and it will review um, what we've done in past classes over the past couple of years um, at the Council on Aging, okay? So we have covered a lot of material. Um, Tashi Mark, can you think of something that you would like to throw in for the people um, that are watching today? Oh, your favorite, hair grab. Oh, my favorite hair, oh, hair grab, okay. So that, that comes up a lot with the women, um, not so much with the men, they don't worry about it too much, okay? So. Tashi Mark is going to grab my hair, and, and I'll show you what happens, okay? So he has my hair, okay? Now, people go, oh, that's going to hurt, it's going to hurt. Well, actually, it doesn't hurt that much, okay? It really doesn't, okay? But what the person wants to do is use that for a handle, okay? So he want, he's going to grab me and throw me down or do whatever, I don't know, okay? I don't want him to use it for a handle, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hand, and it doesn't matter which one, I can even take both. I'm going to hold his hand to my head. Once I do that, and one thing I do want to mention too is, you know, if you're being attacked from behind, drop your weight, okay? So you want to bend your knees, okay? That, that roots you, gives you, you a much better chance. You're, you're rooted, okay? If I keep my legs straight and he pulls back, okay, I'm going to lose my balance. So as soon as you feel somebody touch you from behind, bend those knees, okay? So now I have his hand. He cannot use it as a handle anymore. I'm pushing it against my head. I'm not, not just holding it. I'm pushing it against my head. Keep it in that place. Now I know where it is. So if I turn this way, oh, there's the midline. Oh, boom, boom. Okay, it's right there. And it wouldn't matter. If I had this hand, okay, we could even do the little Shakira shift. Oh, boom. Okay, it just gives me a chance to do something. All right, so if just hold it to your head and then use that midline. Okay, so just a really quick review. One of the most important things, of course, is what, Tashi Mark? Breathing. Breathing, practice your breathing. Okay, excellent, yep, beautiful. Okay, um, practice being confident. You know, you should, you have every right to be wherever you are, walk like that. Brief eye contact. Okay, side on guard, as we call it, or just turning sideways. Somebody approaches you and you have your hands up. There are your weapons right there. Your weapons, your fist, your palm. Got some nice elbows in there. Boom, elbows are good.
okay? Knees, okay? Stomping, kicking, okay? And you want to keep doing all this until you get away. Practice your midline. Go to the mirror and practice eyes, nose, philtrum, sweet spot, throat, xiphoid process or solar plexus, and your groin. Maybe stomp and kick, but do that in the mirror. Okay? You have your one, two, three, kick, wave, strike, and yell. Okay? You have your Shakira, so you slip to the side. Then you have your openings there. And you have your hair grab. So that will give you some things to practice. Once things get back to normal in our regular routine, I would invite anyone to um, contact uh, Sheila Taylor at the Council on Aging and sign up for one of the classes. We run them the third Wednesday of every month. Uh, we have a curriculum which includes knife defenses, um, social uh, interaction uh, issues with, um, you know, perhaps a, a neighbor not knowing what to do with a neighbor who's, who's being aggressive. Uh, we have all kinds of topics. We do balance work. Um, so check the uh, Council on Aging um, newsletter, uh, give a call, and you know anyone is welcome to come to those classes. So hopefully we're back to normal pretty soon. So thank you very much, and have a wonderful day. Bye.